So to, to, uh, before I even start, I was a few stories about the actual exploit kits and how they are mm, doing things. <laughs> uh, so with the angler going out of the stage, it's actually the, 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 the scene is dead. We can see how there was quite nice bugs in, in uh, nuclear trying to adapt the things from angler. Uh, mostly the um, Diffie-Hellman algorithm for, for hiding exploits, and they didn't even try to think how the Diffie-Hellman works and use the f totally random keys that were f f um, factorable, so you can bypass the whole Diffie-Hellman. Um, yeah, that was one of the funny bugs, and so let's start. Uh, so let's as Imbar said, my name is Maciej Kotowicz. Uh, I work as a malware researcher for CertPL and play with for a lot of CTFs with Dragon Sector. My main topic of interest is actually uh, reverse engineering and developing uh, exploits. Um, and, you know, automatization of the things. And I like to get my hands d dirty and do things that's not maybe not always, um, let's say, legal. Uh, <laughs> but who cares? Uh, so, when you are analyze the malware, you can then find, let's say, CNC address. You can do three things, right? You can either create your rules and secure your environment. You can give information to others, uh, ask the domain register or whoever to, to take it down, or you can, you know, play with it. And I like to play with it. Um, so little again, that we'll try to start with how to get inside of the CNCs. Um, what's funny about ATSs and automatic transfer systems and why are they such, such creepy, uh, crap, crappy tools. When we get inside, so that's actually where the fun starts and I try to explore more of this and, and things actually how the infrastructure of bad guys actually really, really looks like. Uh, so this disclaimer actually doesn't mean anything right now because I was, when I was compiling the list from what exploits and what bugs I want to disclose and what show. I did it for a long, long time, and you don't keep evidence for your wrongdoing, right? Because you don't want to get caught. <laughs> so I don't have much of the, the, the pictures and code, so you can take, take pictures of it because it doesn't matter. But yeah, that, that, that work I was doing was not affiliated with CERT normal behavior. I do it on my own. So don't, don't blame them, blame me if I hug your servers. <laughs> so I started with a couple of simple uh, CNCs, you know, to, to just give you in, into speed. Uh, I think most of them are actually publicly known. Uh, that's only a couple of those. There's many, many more. This site is actually quite fun because it compiles a list of all the publicly disclosed vulnerabilities in CNCs and other uh, malware. Uh, so let's start with Pony. If you don't know the pony is uh, one of the most popular stealers, well, the malware that is used to, to steal data from, from computers. Uh, right now being heavy, heavily used by uh, Man One Gang, the guys were doing um, Dire, uh, um, Wolf Track, stuff like that. So they, they then sense it, the bunch of emails that are spamming every day. So let's go with the one fun, fun vulnerability. Um, so basically, you try to auto, you go to the panel. Yeah, you try try, try to identificate to, you know, to to get the data that you stole, um, and after that, you, you don't want to pass type every time you password. That, so, so you have a cookie that remembers. Okay, I already signed up and I'm ready, I'm authenticated, so I can use it. And how it does? It creates a hmm, random salt value, <laughs> which is supposed to be probably random, not the, not the constant string, and no some. Hmm, some values provided in the, uh, from it, it's, uh, SH1 is calculated. And so the funny thing is they use like the, this, this works, okay, this one. So if you don't know PHP, PHP that's actually, then, then you are very lucky persons. <laughs> uh, so my, micro time function gives you a number of seconds, um, microseconds. So basically a couple of, well, it's like, Micro, it's um, 1,000 seconds and a couple of others. Uh, so, and that is kind of constant, right? You can calculate it before on, on your own offline computer. It's like 10, 1 million possibilities, and you can you know, just, just, just throw it out of the, the CNC and get logged without the password. Um, so, yeah, but it's old like hell. It was firstly. 
I'm not sure it's ever, anything of this is visible to you. Probably not. So there's, there's a link to the Excel little uh, blog post from 2013, I think. <laughs> Let's say like that. All right, so Hans Sitter, the, the, the second part. Uh, I don't have any slides for this, lonely story. The, the work was done mostly by, by, by Benkov, and kudos to him for this. It's the example of uh, vulnerability that's very often in uh, first-time writers in PHP and other web things like um, when you try to try to check the um, authentication process, the, the basic out most most of the time, or on on any other logins, uh, you should you know kill your processing, right? You don't want to present anything, and, or you know send the location, the header saying the, you redirect my browser to, to the login page, which is fun and fine everything, okay, but well it works for for browsers, but if you use like curl or something that doesn't, doesn't follow the headers, it gives you the rest of the code because it's getting executed. And after that, you, you can see the, the, the whole code, the, the, the other links, and look for other bugs. There was a bunch of SQL injections over there. But that, that's, so the Hansitor is only a dropper, so that's not very funny to, to see. We can get a list of, uh, a list of infected people. Uh, so let's go for more serious malware. Uh, this one is with us for, for a long, long time. And the code is copied over and over to other uh, derivatives of Zeus. Um, so one of the main purposes of the bot is to steal information, right? So, and they need to be saved somewhere. Why not save it on the, web, on the same web server that's accessible to you? Uh, but you know, the guys are quite they know what they're doing. They put a array of blacklists, the bad extensions that you can you cannot send the uh, PHPs. So you probably cannot execute anything. Uh, it's actually not that simple uh, because there are a couple of bypasses. So for Apache, that is mo mostly used because it are ha either hacked servers or you know the, the, the simple uh, lamp uh, setups. There is uh, this funny funny bug and behavior actually from from. Uh, from mm, in Apache that goes so when it's try to mm, load the, the, the web page uh, it goes through every exten uh, extension from the end and it if it doesn't understand one then it goes f until it understands the first extension or then you said so this one is totally ignored and the PHP is actually executed why they did it it's like beyond my my, 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 my imagination and there is this like very old uh, extension that's PHT from Windows because every Windows extension has to be three letters, right? So that's one of the bypasses. It works pretty well for Zeus, uh, VMs, uh, Kins, uh, Citadels, everything actually, because the code is getting copied, copied, and over. No one cares. And that's another vulnerability in upload stuff. My kind of favorite malware. <laughs> I speak. Spoke a lot about it. Published a couple of things. Uh, it's ESFB, also known as Ursniv or Gozi. And you know, there's a couple of different panels. This is from uh, from Dreambot version. And as well, there is there is a possibility to upload things. There is a uh, list of blacklisted extensions. Um, okay, so there is a there is a proxy that's going on. Trying to, I don't know if, you, if any of you saw that how the requests for ISFB looks like. It's a bunch of uh, long requests with, that are um, base64 encoded and then after, un, under that encrypted. And it's not very, you know, you cannot deal with it, like parse it. You first to have to decode it and then you can assign actions. Uh, so there is a proxy that's responsible to do with it. So that's first check is on the proxy, le proxy level. There is another one and the same thing in CNC, actual CNC. But no, everything is by possible. You can upload the HD access. That's some kind of, when they are obviously running Apache. In HD access, you can um, define what handlers are used to uh, interpret the, the, the files. For example, you can say that HD access is actually the, the PHP script and execute code of it. That was nice. I managed to get a couple of the things from it. 
And after, after some time, the bad guys starting to you know, see that uh, we're getting pwned, what's happening? Let's add another check. <laughs> so they added this one and this one on the side of proxy and CNC. So let's do some questions. Who, who knows how to bypass it? That's obviously you can just you know, buy, put the slash on it. Doesn't matter for, for, for Unix. <laughs> and you know you can put like a bunch of those. It's <laughs> the funny thing is like this this actually this is uh, this is a good way to check it. <laughs> I don't know why they figure about this. If they add the HT access to this array, it will be perfectly fine. <laughs> but this check is fucked up. <laughs> And they've at some point said, uh, we don't know how to process with those guys, let's fuck it right in peril. <laughs> Kudos to, the, to John Bambanek for, for, for a picture. And, you know, so it wasn't hackable, but um, the peril is not that fast. There was only database, the code was shitty. They don't know how to do it. So they put an indexing uh, software on top of it and didn't try to secure access to it, so you can just you know, get a, have everything from database from there. Why not? Thank you. Uh, okay, so when we, we pawn some CNCs, let's pawn some ATSs. ATS stands for Automatic Transfer System. There are, there are systems that are used to you know, automatically transfer money from your bank account to someone else's. And that's an example of... Um, so I think most of those, th those were written by like eight years old children or something. So that, that, that's the level of code that I was learning when I was learning how to, how to read, write, and things like that. It's one of the lists of, you know, the SQL injections are everywhere, like from every part of possibility that can do it, there is an SQL injection for it. So, you know, just a bunch of others. And it goes forth and forth and try to fit, fit. So this one was quite nice because it was a, it started two years ago. Showing up was nice and visu visually nice. You can send job identification and stuff like that. And there was a, obviously a SQL injection in login, like the basics of basics of SQL injection. You go to to Google, write it, how to check for SQL injections. You know, and get like million of results and or how not to write SQL injections. But it took them two years to patch it. So right now it's it's patched part. For other. Um, Funny at ATS bugs like uh, there is a S SQL Lite database that's accessible to the world, so you don't have to even try to pawn it. You can just download all every data, including the Money Mules accounts. That's important. <laughs> so when we actually get to the server, that's where the fun part begins because you know that's that's easy stuff. You can do it by like you know, in the train or in airplane, stuff like that, without much thinking. Then it goes, sometimes they are already on the root account, so that's fun. Well, that's not fun because you have your whole access, but at some point you need to escalate so that you can use the normal the bugs that are disclosed, like fix HP, overlay from Rebel, Dirtica, whatever, whatever uh, uh, elevation of privilege was, was disclosed. Or you can go for uh, another f things, like those, um, well, most of those servers are uh, Ukrainian and Rus Russian based. I don't know why, but hmm. <laughs> and they have this couple of uh, VPS managers that are installing every time. So you can go and check for bugs there. And yeah. Or you can try to see how they are actually using things and try to find bugs there. I will talk a little bit about the one bug that I found in the ASP manager. So it's like a web hosting, Linux server, control panel, advanced solution, blah, 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 blah. And it's written like crap. <laughs> Obviously, uh, <laughs> it was found in the version four. The five was completely rewritten, so they remove it. Uh, the, the hacks were like 90s or something like that. You know, just have a code that's executed, and you don't think about it. Load the, don't think about how the directories are actually managed in, in, in on, on their Linux and Unix servers. So basic was a, you know there was a set to it binary that was always running on the root privileges, and you can uh, you can manipulate the path to, 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 to force it to load your own binary and you know, get a root on it and win. Uh, that was funny. That was out, using autocryptors, like the Perl script that was responsible for to take, to take a binary from one, uh, one, one directory, 
push it to the crypto server and you know put it on another directory. And the funny bug was in uh, yeah, the, the, the server was executed, whatever, one of the many cryptors that are there. Uh, so there was a nice command injection in file path. So not everybody knows, but the file path in under Unix can have cannot have only one type of uh, character. It's a slash. Everything else allowed. So you can put command perfectly fine in in Perl, uh, in in, uh, in command uh, file name. Sorry. And the opening file in Perl is not that easy because you can put a slash there, and there is, seems to be command execution over there. That's perfectly fine. Why not? Well, if we own one server, why don't own a whole company? Uh, so this is a... <laughs> uh, I was reading a full disclosure once and see the bug that was kind of funny. Uh, you don't see links as well, okay. Uh, so the bug was about problems with containers because they are hard and uh, username, username, uh, namespace, user namespaces, sorry. A uh, couple of things were wrong. It was possible to escape from the container, mounted container in some type. And it turns out there are a couple of virtualization softwares that are vulnerable to it. Uh, it was, I don't remember the name, well, whatever, they are fixed right now. But, you know, it was fun, just wrote the, I, I, I wrote the exploit, tried on my, my server first, submitted to, to, to the owners, they give me uh, things, like 20 years of servers. <laughs> Uh, and then I said, oh, we have, a con we have uh, access to those VPSs that are run by criminals. It's it, it looks like, 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 um, like a bulletproof hosting, so let's try it. Oh, it works. So I had access to you know, the whole, whole company. There was no harm, no, no legal accounts for there, that, that, that's for sure, mostly malware and porn and child porn and stuff like that. So bad things, don't judge me. Yeah, so... And then when you get some access, you can try to, you know, to, to actually understand how the bad guys are operating, right? How, how they connect to their servers, what, how they, what type of tools they are using to crypt and what's not. Um, and one thing is funny, most of the guys that are operating botnets are infecting themselves, right? Because they want to test it. <laughs> so you get access to their machines because you control the botnet. You can see what, what, what the logs like, what, what, what they're what they're having, and from there you can access to you know the, the, everything that's, that's that's there, including you know, money, mules, shops, Bitcoin transfer, what's not, cybercrime forums, everything. So you get access to everywhere. Uh, 